Hey, what is up guys? So I just picked up this XR70 for my son, and it does have a few issues. It's making a lot of engine noise. It's also hard to start. It doesn't really want to idle, and it also has poor throttle response, and it's low on power. So I'll play a clip for you guys so you can hear what it sounded like. And then after that, we'll get into the engine teardown. So I'm certain at some point someone already had this cylinder head off for reasons unknown to me. That's probably one of the worst things about going over someone else's work is you're never really sure uh, what condition they left things put back together in. And in this case, they left the motor slightly out of time and they also left the cam chain roller just free floating around in there and getting chewed up all by the cam chain. So let's get into the engine teardown. And I'm going to start by draining the oil here. This is just a 17 millimeter bolt. Go ahead and break that loose. And then I also undo the dipstick just to let it flow out a little easier. I want to get out as much engine oil as possible because I am going to remove this clutch cover. And here is some of the metal shavings and chunks of rubber all left in the oil from that cam chain roller. Next, I'm going to go ahead and undo the spark plug. This is going to also make it easier when I turn the flywheel to set the timing marks. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the exhaust. This is just two 10 millimeter nuts. Next, you can go ahead and remove the number plate. This is just a 10 millimeter bolt. That exposes the rear exhaust mount. This is just a 10 millimeter bolt and an 11 millimeter nut on the back side. Then you can go ahead and remove the exhaust. Then I undo the throttle cable from the carburetor. And then switching sides here, I'm going to go ahead and remove the air box. I'm going to start by turning off the gas and then removing the gas line. Just go ahead and move that clip out of the way. And then I always use a flathead screwdriver to just pry it off of there. Remove all your vacuum hoses. Then using a Phillips head screwdriver, you can undo the hose clamp for the air box. I use a flathead to pry that off, and then just go ahead and remove that. Then you can uninstall these two 8mm bolts that hold on the carburetor, and get that out of the way. Then you can undo this 10mm bolt for the shift lever. I go ahead and reinstall that, just so I don't lose things along the way. And this is the cam chain tensioner. This is a 14 millimeter bolt. This is a hydraulic tensioner. And the spring goes in with the tapered side uh, going up against the tensioner itself. And here's the hydraulic tensioner. Remove that. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the flywheel cover. This is just three 10, uh, 8 millimeter bolts. And they are different sizes, so just kind of want to try and keep them in order. And 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and set the motor to top dead center, aligning the line on the flywheel that says T with the notch on the, the crankcase. Then I'm going to go ahead and undo this 10 millimeter bolt that holds the cam chain gear cover. Go ahead and undo that. This does go all the way through the cylinder head. So I undo it a little bit and then give it a little push and that helps aid in removing the cam uh, gear cover. And I was looking at the timing marks. I already had this set to top dead center and I noticed it was off. So I go ahead and spin the motor over two more revolutions just to make sure. And sure enough, it was off by at least a tooth or two. Now I'm just removing the valve adjustment covers and these are just two 17 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and remove those, get those out of the way. Then I'm just gonna break loose the valve adjuster with a nine millimeter wrench and then back that out all the way for maximum valve clearance. Go ahead and break the two eight millimeter bolts loose on the cam chain gear. Get those broke loose. Then you can go ahead and remove the cam chain gear. Get to remove the gear. And then I try not to lose the chain, but it's not really going to matter since I'm taking the cylinder head off anyway. Then I'm going to reinstall the cam chain gear bolts back into the camshaft. This is going to make it easier to uninstall the camshaft. Go ahead and get those inserted and then remove the camshaft. Then you can go ahead and break this 10 millimeter bolt loose on the side of the cylinder head. and then break these four 10 millimeter nuts loose. I stagger these starting with the bottom right hand corner then going to the upper left hand corner, then the lower left hand corner and finishing with the upper right hand corner. Once those are all broke loose, you can go ahead and remove the nuts and the washers. Then you can go ahead and remove the cylinder head. And look at this cam chain roller that was left rolling around in here. It's almost non-existent. It's half chewed up and looks terrible. Here's a new cam chain roller and you can see there's quite a difference between the two. So go ahead and install that in between the cam chain. And then reinstall the cam chain roller bolt. I'll just go ahead and snug that. Then I also make sure that the cam chain roller is spinning freely. Now I'm just going to go ahead and clean up this head gasket surface. And there is an O-ring down here for this oil port for the uh, exhaust valve. And that O-ring itself was pretty damaged as well. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that also. But I'm just going to go ahead and clean up this gasket surface as much as I can. Make sure it's pretty clean. 
it doesn't have to be spotless, but you know, it has to be pretty clean. And here's the cylinder head itself. And I can definitely tell that somebody had this off at some point. There's all kinds of marks here in the soft aluminum for where somebody was kind of prying. Go ahead and clean up that surface as well. And then install a new head gasket. I get that in place. Then I reinstall a new O-ring. I put a little bit of grease on that just to kind of help hold it in place. Now I can reinstall a cylinder head and feed the cam chain through. And I try using this little bolt to help feed the cam chain through. It's actually just easier to use your hands, so I recommend just doing that. However, this little bolt does come in handy to hold the cam chain up here in the cylinder head. So it kind of rides about here anyway uh, when it would hold the cam chain cover on. So it works out great to kind of hold the cam chain in place. Give it a little tappy tap, make sure it's sitting flush. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove this uh, valve cover gasket material. I remove like 90% of it with my knife and then I stuffed a paper towel down in there just to make sure I wasn't getting any particles down in there. And then I just sanded the rest of it down to make sure that gasket surface nice and clean. Then I go ahead and tighten this 10 millimeter bolt back down. And then reinstall the camshaft. You want to reinstall it with the cam lobes pointing down. Got to remove those cam chain gear bolts. I'm just making sure the flywheel is still set to top dead center. And then you can go ahead and remove the uh, reinstall the cam chain gear. I just kind of open the cam chain up how it would kind of naturally sit in there. And then I install the gear going up from the bottom and working its way in. And here it is installed. However, you can notice that the timing marks are not aligned. So I'm going to go ahead and make that adjustment here. Go ahead and remove the cam chain gear off of the camshaft. And then just undo the chain. Try to move it just like one tooth at a time. And I got it pretty perfect here. It's dead on now. I only had to move it one tooth. And the timing marks are lined up perfect. Now you can reinstall your cam chain gear bolts. I just rotate the camshaft going through the valve cover here with my, my index finger so I can line those two holes up. And this bolt wasn't going in uh, too smooth so I just backed it out and kind of cleaned it up a little bit. When you're reinstalling things you just kind of want to make sure they go back together easy and kind of natural shouldn't really have to fight nothing too much now I'm going to go ahead and recheck my timing marks by spinning the flywheel two revolutions so that's one revolution on the flywheel and half a revolution on the cam gear there and this is two on the flywheel and one full revolution for the cam chain gear and as you can see, the timing marks on the cam chain gear line up and the timing mark on the flywheel lines up. Now I'm going to go ahead and set the valve clearance. And it's supposed to be set to 0 0.03 millimeters on both the intake and exhaust valve. So I go ahead and insert the feeler gauge. You want to be able to install it freely. But uh, when removing it, you want to feel just a little bit of resistance. So I go ahead and insert that. And then adjust the lash adjuster. Then I hold that still with a pair of needle nose pliers so it doesn't move. And then go ahead and tighten down the 9mm locking nut. 
Then I recheck the valve clearance. And it's perfect. And the process for your exhaust valve is the same one, so I didn't record that. Now I'm just changing these O-rings and the valve cover bolts. Just cleaning up that surface. Install a new O-ring, and then I put a little film of engine oil on that O-ring as well. Now you can reinstall your valve cover. This gets installed with that arrow pointing down. And I'm just going to install the cam gear cover here. Installing a new gasket. Go ahead and install that. And you want to make sure that it's lining up with this little tab on the side of the cylinder head here. It's a little locking tab just when you're tightening it so it doesn't spin around. Then you can go ahead and reinstall your cylinder head bolts. And these get torqued to 97 inch pounds. And I stagger these as well starting with the top right hand corner then going down to the bottom left hand corner then to the bottom right hand corner. And then finishing up on the top left hand corner. And here's the cam chain roller bolt. That gets torqued down to 88 inch pounds. And the camshaft sprocket bolts get torqued down to 80 inch pounds. Now I'm just reinstalling the throttle cable back into the carburetor. That slide goes only in in one way. There's a little notch for the slide and then there's also a tapered spot for where the idle air screw goes. So it's pretty easy to install. Go ahead and reinstall this spacer here that has an o-ring gasket. And reinstall your two 8mm bolts. Now you can go ahead and reinstall your air box. Make sure that that little notch at the top uh, lines with that bolt and then go ahead and reinstall all your hoses and make sure all your clips are on tight. Make sure those are all good to go. And now I'm reinstalling the cam chain tensioner. And again, it goes in with that springs tapered in going up towards the cam chain tensioner itself. Reinstall that 14 millimeter bolt. Make sure that's snug down a little bit. And this 10 millimeter bolt here is the oil access port for the cam chain tensioner. And they do recommend priming that with one to two cc's of engine oil. So go ahead and do that and then reinstall your 10 millimeter access bolt. Now I'm reinstalling the flywheel cover and these three 8 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and get all three of those in place and then snug those down. Go ahead and reinstall the shift lever and its 10 millimeter bolt. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the spark plug. Go ahead and snug that down. And reinstall the spark plug wire. I'm going to reinstall the exhaust.
and then tighten up these two 10 millimeter nuts. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the kicker lever so I can go ahead and remove this clutch cover. So in this clutch cover, there is an oil filter screen. So I'm definitely going to change that out after I seen all that debris in the oil. So go ahead and remove that and then remove the back brake lever spring here. And then you also have to remove the foot pegs as well. Go ahead and break these 8mm bolts loose in a uh, staggered kind of crisscross pattern. Once those are all broke loose, go ahead and remove those. And try to keep those in order because they are uh, all different sizes. Go ahead and remove those. And then I just give the clutch cover a little tap. And then there's a little ear here you can pry on. And I just pry that. And it comes right off. And here's that oil filter screen. I just remove that with a little pair of pliers because my fingers are too fat to fit in there. And look how filthy this screen is. So much pieces of rubber and metal shavings so I go ahead and clean that up and then reinstall it it does only go in one way and it's tapered so when I took my clutch cover off uh, my uh, shift lever and uh, my clam plate roller bearing here uh, did come off as well so I'm just installing a little bit of grease on that spring there to help kind of hold it in place once that's all in place I got the gasket surfaced, cleaned up, and then go ahead and install a new clutch cover gasket. Reinstall the clutch cover. And uh, this was a little hard to align. It does help to play around with that kicker shaft there so it can uh, kind of sit flush. Once it's sitting flush, you can go ahead and reinstall your 8mm bolts. And again, some of these are longer. And some of them are shorter, so you just kind of want to remember to keep those in order. So I got all those tightened down, and then I go ahead and torque those down to 44 inch pounds, which isn't very much, so you don't really want to over torque these because you could strip them out. And once that's all torqued down, I fill the bike up with 10W30 engine oil, and here is the first kick, literally after putting it back together. And it starts right up on first kick. It sounds a lot better, and also has a lot more throttle response. I'm happy with how the bike turned out. My son's super happy, and that's the most important part. And here's my son out here having fun in some trails and he's having a good time and enjoying himself and that's what it's all about guys that's what we do it for so we can get our kids out there riding with us and having fun so he's happy and I'm happy so I'll try to leave some links in the description to eBay where I got the Tusk uh, top end gasket set it's very cheap and very affordable this job is pretty easy, doesn't really take a whole lot, so hopefully you don't have any issues like I did. But if you ever need to rebuild one of these or anything, the timing process is pretty simple and easy enough to do. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.